Hi, my name is Natasha and I'm the Education and Promotion Manager at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Landcare, otherwise known as CIRCLE. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the traditional uses of some of the native plants of the southwest of Western Australia. These will be just a very small sample of the many beautiful plants we have growing in this region and will highlight the ways in which they were, and in many cases still are, used by the traditional custodians of the land, the Noongar people. The southwest of Western Australia, which is also known as the Kwangan, is one of 35 global hotspots for wildlife and plants and was the first one identified in Australia. Biodiversity hotspots are defined as regions where exceptional concentrations of endemic species are undergoing exceptional loss of habitat. The southwest, or Kwangan, harbours an astonishing 7,239 vascular plant species, almost 80% of which are found nowhere else in the world. Plants are grown naturally in the southwest of Western Australia were traditionally used for food or bush tucker, medicine and survival purposes by the original Aboriginal inhabitants and in some cases the early settlers. The term Noongar refers to Aboriginal Australian people who live in the southwest corner of Western Australia and whose ancestors were the original inhabitants of this area. Archaeological evidence establishes that Noongars have inhabited the southwest of Western Australia for 45,000 years. The Noongar nation is made up of 14 different language groups, each of which correlates with a different geographic area which have ecological distinctions. European settlers arrived in this area in 1826, landing firstly in Albany before establishing a colony in Perth in 1829. Noongars follow six seasons, each of which represents and explains the seasonal changes we see annually. These seasons are known as Barak, Bunaru, Jiran, Makaru, Jilba and Kumbarang. Each season approximately corresponds to two months of the year, although in reality they can be long or short and are indicated by what is happening and changing around us, rather than by dates on the calendar. Over the coming slides, I'll be showcasing plants used during each of these seasons. The common name will be followed by the Noongar name in brackets and the scientific name in italics. I will only read the common name as I am unsure of the correct pronunciation of many of the Noongar names and do not wish to perpetuate incorrect pronunciations. The pronunciation of many Noongar words can be found at the website at the bottom of your screen. Barak occurs around December to January during what is commonly known as summer. This season is hot and dry with no rain and daytime easterly breezes and late afternoon southwest sea breezes. Barak is represented by the colour red, which symbolises heat, the sun and fire. The Christmas tree comes into flower in a spectacular way at the beginning of Barak. It is a hemiparasitic plant, which means it attaches its roots to the roots of other plants to get nutrients from the host. Historically during this time, the Wajak Noongar people, who lived in and around the Perth region, were moving along the river towards the coast. One of the plants used during Barak is coastal pig face. It is a succulent plant that covers the ground. After flowering, the fruit appears and can be eaten. The leaves can also be boiled and eaten as greens. Juice from the leaves can be used as a medicine to treat stings, scalds or burns. The bull banksia is another plant used during Barak. Its flower spikes were used to make a drink of honey sweet mead. The nectar was also sucked directly from the flower. Grubs which burrow into the flower spikes were gathered and eaten and seed cones were used to carry smouldering coal when travelling. There are 60 species of banksia that are only found in the southwest of Western Australia and most were used in similar ways. Bunaroo occurs around February to March during what is commonly thought of as summer and autumn. This season is hot and dry with easterly and northerly winds. Bunaroo is represented by the colour orange to symbolise the abundance of fishing and lack of rain. It is the time of the white flowers with lots of white flowering gums in full bloom, including jarrah, mary and ghost gums. During this time, the Wajak Noongar people were located at the coast. Mary is one of the trees that blooms during Bunaroo. These white blossoms are soaked in water to make a sweet drink. Seeds that form in the honky or gum nuts that develop after flowering can be eaten or ground into flour and used to make damper. Resin can be used as a medicine to treat an upset stomach or mixed with water and rubbed onto skin to treat eczema. 
Large quantities of the powdered gum were used to tan kangaroo skins. Grass trees were an important plant for the Noongar people as they have lots of uses. Like many other plants, the flowers were used to make a sweet drink. Gum from the flowering spikes was made into cakes and the dead spikes were used to make fire or as a spear shaft. Barley grubs were collected from the trunks of dying trees. The black resin from the trunk was used as an adhesive to attach spearheads to a shaft or to start a fire. Bunches of leaves were used as thatching material for the roof of a hut and when dried were made into torches. Durin occurs around April to May during what is commonly known as autumn. During this season it is becoming cooler with southwesterly winds and the first rains falling. Durin is represented by the colour green to symbolise cooler weather and eucalyptus trees. It is a time of red flowers, especially from plants such as the red flower and gum. The Wajak Noongar people were moving towards the hills along the rivers and creeks during Durin. One of the plants used by Noongars during Durin was a zamia. The zamia is considered to be a prehistoric plant as it is a species that has been on earth since the time of the dinosaurs. The seeds are toxic and were used as a source of food and as a hunting mechanism. The toxic seeds were able to be used as a food by Noongars only after extensive processing. After treatment and prior to eating, the pulp which encases the seed was roasted and is said to taste similar to a tomato. When European explorers first arrived, they were poisoned from eating unprocessed seeds. Raw seeds were ground into a powder and used to stun fish in local waterways to make them easier to catch. The woolly material found around the base of fronds on top of the trunk was used as fire tinder or as an absorbent fibre for hygienic purposes. Makaroo occurs around June to July during what is commonly called winter. During this time it is cold and wet with westerly gales. Makaroo is represented by the colour blue to symbolise rain and cold weather. The blues and purples of flowers such as the blueberry lily and purple flag come out during this season. The Wajak Noongar people would travel inland during Makaroo to hunting areas located beyond the hills in the area now referred to as the wheat belt. One of the plants used during Makaroo was Old Man Saltbush. Its woody branches were used as fuel for fires and also acted as a windbreak. The minute saltbush seeds were ground and roasted to make flour for damper. Large fresh blanched saltbush leaves can be used as a wraparound meat or fish, in salads or as a leafy bed for grilled meat or vegetables. Dried saltbush flakes can be added to damper as flavouring. Julba occurs around August to September or as winter turns into spring. During this season the second rains come but it is becoming warmer. Julba is represented by the colours pink or light blue or purple to symbolise the growth of wildflowers and plants. During Julba, plants begin to flower, starting with the yellow flowering plants such as the acacias. During this season, the Wajak Noongar stayed inland for hunting. One of the plants used during Julba was the harsh hakea. It is called harsh due to the spikes on its leaves. Once again, the nectar from flowers was used to make a sweet drink. The woody fruits of this plant were placed in a fire to crack them open and then the seeds were eaten. They are said to taste like roasted almonds. The bark was burnt into a white ash that was used as a topical medicine to heal wounds. Kumbarang occurs around October to November or during the spring. It is the wildflower season and is getting hotter with less rain. Kumbarang is represented by the colour yellow to symbolise the return of hot weather. The grass tree will continue to flower during this time. The Wajak Noongar people headed back towards the coast along the rivers and creeks during Kumbarang. The Scarlet Runner, otherwise known as the Running Postman, is one of the wildflowers of Kumbarang. The flowers provide a source of sweet nectar that can be sucked straight from the flower. The leaves were used to make a tea-like drink, which is said to have a pleasant licorice flavour. And the stems of the plant were used as twine for building or construction purposes. The final plant I will describe today, and one that was also used during Kumbarang, is the Coastal Sword Sedge. The leaves were used to make rope and string for maya maya or shelters. The white base of the leaf is edible and can be eaten raw or roasted, and plants in wetter areas are said to be more succulent. Circles Phosphorus Awareness Project would like to acknowledge the Noongar people to whom the knowledge in this video should be credited. 
Please do not prepare bush tucker food without having been shown by an Aboriginal elder or experienced person. Some bush tucker, if eaten in large quantities or not prepared correctly, can cause illness. For more information about bush tucker plants, go to www.circle.org.au forward slash our projects forward slash bush tucker. Thank you.